So let's talk about helmet setup and night vision. This is night vision down. This is cool. This is not. Don't flip them up, that's stupid. If you're done using them, go wide. They'll shut off automatically and you can see underneath. Way better, way smarter, and it meets the ABC rule, which is always be cool. Deer antlers, not cool. So let's talk about this stuff. So this is my helmet setup. And what I've got here is a, an OpsCore Fast SF super high cut ballistic helmet. The super high cut uh, shell geometry uh, is kind of neat because it extends uh, kind of critical coverage over that rear occipital lobe back down here. Uh, so you can see down, it goes down the back of the head pretty good basically to cover the base of your skull. But the ear cut that you see here, the geometry on the ear cut is 16 millimeters higher than the fast XP high cut shell shape that they they also make. And why is that important? Because it lets you have clearance for larger headset comms devices. Like for me, you see, I don't have I don't have anything mounted here in where comms because I wear I wear this over my head because sometimes. You want to take this off, but you still need to be able to talk to people. You still need ear pro on. And so what I've done is just removed some pads along the, the inside portion here, and that allows the, the headband to fit nicely. And that allows for that strap to fit comfortably. And this super high cut area here uh, allows for it just to fit snugly over the top of it. So that's, that's kind of the, the point of that. And, you know, the... The suspension system in this thing that you just looked at up inside here, the suspension system is this part. And that is a, it's vented, it's called a Lux liner, and it's got a, a low profile uh, dial fit band in the back. And that's um, what you're seeing right here is this, you can turn this and this tightens the, uh, the headband around you. So once you put the helmet on, you dial that thing in and it locks it into your head and it fits real well. You can slosh your head all around and it's not gonna, it's not gonna be moving around and coming off. So that's, that's pretty cool. This, the helmet is ballistic, but it is not designed to stop 7.62. Let's get that out there right now. It's not, this is not gonna stop an AK-47 round unless, I mean, it absolutely would have to hit it the perfect angle to stop that, that round. What this is really designed to do is uh, shrapnel, right? It's protect you from uh, frag, uh, whether it's from a, a mine, a grenade, or an RPG hitting somewhere close by, or artillery round, whatever, it's just designed for uh, shrapnel to stop that. There are um, cheaper ballistic helmets. This is the, like I said, the Ops Corps. It's kind of the top of the line. But, you know, I've only got one brain, and as limited as it may be, I like to protect it. And so I, you know, we, we use these because they're arguably the best out there you can get cheaper stuff and then you can if you drop down a level they have a ops core carbon it's not ballistic offers you more protection though than a bump helmet right a bump helmet is lightweight it's made out of plastic basically uh, ops core makes one uh, matter of fact we sell all these helmets on our on our website but the OpsCore bump helmet's around 320 bucks. This thing goes for around 1800, fully kitted out. And you know, the bump helmet is for what it says. You can mount nods on it. You can mount anything you can mount on this on a bump helmet. It just weighs practically nothing. It's good for keeping your your head from getting bumped if you're running around. So that's uh, that's kind of what that is. So let's let's take this thing from nut to butt and take a look at what we got here. Starting in the well, we're going to go butt to nut. Starting in the back, uh, I've, I've got an IR uh, flag back here, infrared flag. So if you hit this thing with IR light, uh, it's going to show up. It's going to let folks know, hey, there's an American. If your teammates are running it, the, uh, shooting the light at you, it's going to be, hey, don't shoot that guy. He's one of us. So big IR flag patch in, in the back back there. On the, side, on the top, this is glint tape, infrared glint tape, right? You hit this with 
an IR light from the top or any angle where you can be seen and it kind of glints, right? It reflects that light. And again, that's just for passive to let people know, hey, this is um, a friendly right here. I do not have a strobe on here. Just, you know, strobes, this is passive. I got, I got basically my strobes are on the sides. Nothing on top. I like to keep the, the helmet as slick and as clean as I can. And, and so there's nothing up here other than a piece of glint tape. And that just Velcros on. It's, it's not actually taped down. It Velcros down there in the center or wherever you want to put it. You can put these all over it. I mean, they're little squares. You can get them pretty easily. So let's, let's keep going. Then we've got on the sides this light right here. And it's twin on the other side. And what this is, this is made by s, &S Precision. Really good company. I think they're based out of Virginia Beach, Virginia. And... This is the, uh, the button to turn it on, and it's got programmable capabilities, so you can push it once, push it twice, push it three times, and it'll do different things, strobe, whatever. It's set, uh, this one, the particular one has uh, green visible light, and, and then you push a series of put presses on that button, and you can go to IR, and it'll constantly, or it'll strobe. So you can have IR strobe on both of these, or you can have you know, visible green on both of these, or it can pulse green or pulse IR. And so that gives you a way of uh, kind of keeping up with your buddies without having to have a bunch of junk on top. There's nothing wrong with like Manta strobes or you know, the Hellstar. Those are great, but personally, um, I, don't, I don't use those. The, uh, this thing is, it's got a run time of like 120, if you turn these both on and just left them, they'd run for 120 hours continuously. They're waterproof down to 60 feet and there's a hole in the end of these things. I don't know if you can see this or not, but right here there's a, a tiny hole right here. And you can put a, a line through there and if you need the signal, you can make a lasso out of it, signal that thing, and now you created a you know a, a good signaling device either for up there or for people you know that are on the same plane as you. Uh, that horizontal plane that is not airplane. So there's that. These things run about 42 bucks, oddly. We also carry these on our website. So there's that. And then actually let's hit the helmet cover real quick. This is a multi-cam helmet cover. They run about 100 and 110 bucks. It's got a lot of different features on here. I don't use a lot of these things. Like you know, this is for routing cables. If you wanted to carry a battery, a supplemental battery pack for your night vision, battery pack go here, run your battery cable through here through these little slots and then plug it in. I don't, I don't use supplemental battery. I just don't. But it's got, you know, cabling for cable management for those types of things. And then it's got a bungee on top. So if you did use the strobes, whether a Manta or a Hellstar, put that thing on here and these bungees snug it down and help retain your, uh, help retain your strobes. Uh, it just, you know, breaks up the outline gives you some options. It's got Velcro fields on it so you can put stuff on there. And next you'll see here, this is a Princeton Tech helmet mounted light. It's, uh, it weighs 17 grams. This thing basically weighs nothing uh, if you, unless you count you know, the little attachment there, but it weighs nothing. It's LED, it's around 40 bucks, and it's just a task light. It's white light. You press the button once, and then it's got a little white light there that comes on and a little flexible head and you know you can turn that thing on and off and give yourself some light and it press it a couple times it gets brighter brighter and brighter and then turns off uh, so it's good uh, for that so that's the um that's the the light there and then let's go to the working towards from butt to nut let's look at the uh the mount this is a wilcox g24 uh mount let me take these bungees off and the wilcox g24 mount is made uh, to break away, right? So if you are on a rope and the rope gets tangled around this, this mount will break away under a certain amount of stress, certain amount of pressure, so that it doesn't snap your neck because your, you know, your head got caught up in this thing. So it gives you a lot of different options, right? There's a fore and aft adjustment. So you squeeze two points here and you can come in and you can come out. And so that just helps set how far away from your eye you want these things to be. So there's that. 
and and then this one you flip this thing and that allows it to come up and down at different levels there right so you can come up or down um, I've got mine set I'll have to go back and reset it now that I demoed it for you and there's that and then if you're a goober you push this button right here and you flip these suckers up and now you got deer antlers don't ever do that that's don't just don't do that back down again so that's the g24 mount it's probably one of the best mounts made and if you're hanging fourteen thousand dollars off of your head you really want this thing to re, to be good and solid but really all it amounts to is a big hinge right all it's, it's just a big hinge that attaches to the shroud that attaches to the helmet but it's an important piece of equipment it saves your neck from breaking by a breakaway option on it and it locks these things in good and tight the other feature comes with the OpsCore helmet is you've got a you got little bungees here and the bungees hook into this on both sides there's a positive and a negative about this thing uh, the positive is it is retention if this breaks away you don't want fourteen thousand dollars to be dropping off into the water or tumbling down the side of a mountain never to be seen again so that's that's key to have these things dummy corded back to you the bad side of it is it's a bungee and if you push this button here and this thing is bungeed in it's going to suck that thing back into your face and it's going to pop you in the eyes so there is a negative to that so you can you can use something other than bungees you can just you know use a another type of line that doesn't have some uh, spring to it so it doesn't come back and jack your face up but it's a good piece of gear to have is to dummy cord this stuff back to your head the night vision itself and what this piece is is a uh, it's white phosphorus lenses white phosphorus film on here and that is what you see when you're looking through these things and we'll put some footage in here later to show you what b-roll footage looks like with um, with the night vision on because there's you know the old school is green this is uh, easier on the eyes the white is easier on the eyes and it just you can you can wear them longer you can use them longer this particular set it's articulating night vision right a n v b articulating night vision binoculars and articulating means you can take these things and move them up and down right and that's what you saw earlier when we did the opening segment here i guess they're down like this and if you need to look at something you can roll one eye out of the way and this thing automatically shuts off once you roll it up past a certain uh, point here and this one's now turned off this one would be on you know that's that's how you would get them out of the way in the event you needed to just look through and look under so that's the articulation point uh, there and I like mine to fit snugly to my face I want them as close to my eyes as I can get them because it gives me an increased uh, field of view the further out you get it's starting to look like you're looking through toilet paper tubes and you don't see the world as much as you could if you have them back this way as far as you can get them so I like them that way and you know, they're, they're just uh, a good a good snug fit to the face this there's a knob here as you can see and this little knob is your gain g-a-i-n gain so you put them on and let's say you're in a a super super dark environment you want to suck in more lights you can turn this to increase the gain and that will allow that'll just make it to where more lights being allowed in through your uh, your lenses in the front to notice that these lenses look like they're solid but you can put these things on and there's a pinhole in the front and you can see through these things just like this in the daytime so say you're doing a you're doing a hit on a building and it's um, it's approaching dark but isn't dark yet you want to put these on you want to have them down and you know you can they're here you can look underneath them just by tilting your head up and looking underneath you know just like wearing a pair of reading glasses where you look over the top this is just the opposite of that and these things are rolled down and you're able just to look underneath and see but they're down and they're ready to go so you jump out of the vehicle you move towards the house and it might be light outside but you hit that house or you hit that cave or whatever the structure is it's going to be a different lighting situation most likely darker and you got these on and you don't want to waste time flopping these things down so you go ahead and put them on turn them on put your covers on and now you're ready to go and then if the light situation changes inside you can either look underneath them by flipping your head up or 
you can just take them and roll them up on the sides and now you can see whatever you need to and you don't have these things popped up like deer antlers to catch on uh, parts of the building so uh, there's that this whole thing guys weighs uh, four pounds and eleven and a half ounces right four pounds and eleven and a half ounces for that whole unit right there and uh, you know me I, by now I think you guys are starting to learn that I, I kind of try to get the most amount of usability and utility out of a piece of equipment without carrying redundant junk so this is a slick helmet you know in terms of how much junk I hang on it I mean, you can hang stuff off this thing and make it look like a flipping Christmas tree, but why? You know, there's an old saying about gear, and, and it's the ounces equal pounds and pounds equal pain. This thing weighs four pounds already and 11 and a half ounces. I don't want to add anything else to it. Neck, you know, you don't want to be an old man one day with your head hanging down because you can't lift it anymore because you jacked your neck up. Uh, so, super good piece of gear, though. And, you know, you, you can use this as a standalone, but it's really designed because of this. It's designed to be used with an infrared sighting system. And we'll talk about those. You know, they're, they have everything from the PEC-15, the NGAL, which is short for Next Generation Aiming Laser, to what we use, which is the, uh, the RAID-X. And the RAID-X, um, we're going to do a, a video on the RAID-X. Uh, coming down the road a little bit, but that'll give you the ability to uh, to use this in the dark, see your target, infrared laser it, and suppress your rifle and hit it. And nobody saw you, nobody heard you. It's just a good way to fight. So that's the helmet, and that's how I set mine up. Hope you enjoyed it. If you got any questions, give us a give us a shout. We sell literally everything you see here. You can get it on our website, and uh, I'll put the links below, and or, well, I won't. Uh, admin. <laughs> admin folks will put the uh, links below in the video. Thanks for watching.